live here with the playbook. I'm your host, Dorian Brown. My co-host, Tyler Coleman, how you doing? And we got a special guest for us today, man. Yes, sir. Yeah. Head coach of the Mad Men, D-Block, the Smet Jesuit High School. We got Coach Steeples. How you doing? Man, I'm good, man. Appreciate you having me, Dorian and Tyler. Um, you know, anything to promote these kids is pretty awesome. So I appreciate y'all creating the platform. For sure. Well, without further ado, I want to get straight into your class of 2022 prospects. You got a guy that I've always liked since I seen him in his freshman year. Um, and Caleb Purdy, uh, DB safety, physical, stands at about 5'10", 163, 164. Speak a little bit about him and what he's been able to do in your program. Yeah, I mean, Caleb's extremely impressive um, as a young man, first and foremost. But on the field, you know, we call Caleb a unicorn. Um, I mean, he's rare. He can cover like a corner, but he can hit like a linebacker. And uh, he impacts the game all over the field. Um, very high IQ player. Um, you know, self-proclaimed, probably one of the best Madden players you'll come across. And and one thing I'm starting to learn is uh, the guys that are good at Madden are usually some of your smartest football players. And so, uh, you know, that IQ is carried over to the field. And, you know, a lot of major, you know, SEC and Big Ten programs are taking notice, and and that's why he's got the scholarship offers he's got. Um, he's a very easy kid to sell, but he's uh, he's a straight up football player, straight dog. Uh, let's speak a little bit about Purdy. One thing is he's been able to start since his freshman year. Speak a little bit about his mindset coming into your program from day one, and how you've been able to see him grow. You know, Kayla was a sponge. I mean, he came in with with no other aspiration other than to learn more about the game of football and earn his respect on this team. Um, you know, we always give young guys a chance. We do a lot together within our program. So we got a lot of eyes on them from the moment they step foot on campus. And uh, I would say I first noticed Caleb in our summer camps, just how serious he was, how, how well he took to the weight room. And uh, you could tell he was mature and he, he had a very, uh, very specific focus on what he wanted out of this experience. And uh, he came to practice, competed every day, and in a few games to the season, he was out there starting. And I, as long as you show the maturity on and off the field and, and the confidence to be ready to contribute, we'll get you out there. And, and Caleb hasn't backed down for anybody since. Definitely has the confidence. I remember seeing him um, before he even started at the SMAC, um in the flight program, mm -hmm. 707 football, and travel. And like you said, he has the confidence to go one on one against anybody in the country. Mm -hmm. So yeah. very, very I agree. Good prospect. Yeah, very good. I agree with you on that. Hey, Coach, we're going to shift gears. We're going to stay with your DBs, but we're going to go to a cornerback. And Mr. Jordan Coleman, 6'1", 180. He's a guy that I feel like um, really picked up some interest this year. I remember the CBC game uh, the first time. He had a very, very big game, and I think it was an offer that followed not too long after that. Yeah. Speak a little bit about – uh, Jordan Coleman, and um, he has good length, but speak a little bit about what he's been able to do in your program. Yeah, big corner. You know, Jordan is, is everything you want in a big corner. You know, like I always say, if you're going to have the title of big corner, you got to be big on the field and big on that island. And he embraces that island like no other. Um, you know, the challenges that come towards him, uh, he's been preparing for it for quite some time. You know, he uh, missed some time his sophomore year uh, with uh, ankle sprain. And uh, to get him back this year full strength, um, was impressive, but, uh, you know, for having such a, a long layoff to come in as sharp as he, he has, that's kudos to Jordan's work ethic. Um, you know, colleges are taking notice because he's extremely physical. Uh, he's got great feet. Um, he's extremely smooth with his transition. Um, uh, his change of direction is almost seamless. He's got very fluid hips. Um, but at the same time, he's very competitive when the ball's in the air. You know, he's got solid ball skills, uh, which is why he can contribute on both sides of the field. But uh, on both sides of the ball, but um, also he's not afraid to stick his nose in there. And so, uh, you know, with him, when you're on the island with Jordan, it's a very physical, uh, it's a very aggressive island, but also it's a very savvy island. I mean, he's a student of the game, um, and obviously he got like 4.0 GPA, so obviously that's going to catch a lot of schools' attention, but, you know, that high IQ also carries over into that island, and, and uh, I mean, he's coming to his own as a leader as well. Yeah, Tyler, Tyler brought up the game against CBC. Me and him saw him saw um, him and the thing that stuck out to me was his attack on the ball at the mm -hmm. high point and he was able to break up a lot of passes and be physical in there i loved i loved his game on, on that um first uh, cbc game 
Yeah, he definitely had his hands full. That was, he had a, quite the challenge with, you know, those receivers that they had lined up across from, uh, namely Chevy. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. he brings it. And, uh, you know, Jordan was up for it, for the challenge, and they went back and forth. And it was a heavyweight bout on that island. And so uh, no as long as you're swinging and fighting, you, you got a chance that people took notice. One thing for me that was huge with Jordan is when we talk about corners, I, I like corners that get their hands on guys. And um, one thing that was big is he had good, good length in his arms. I'm, I was like, mm -hmm. hey. and I'm going to be honest, he was a kid that I wasn't very familiar with coming into the season. Me too. Yeah. So to see him actually stand on all 10, like you're saying, in that game that he had, that was a huge game. It was it was, it was was very telling to see. But um, I definitely see what you mean with uh, getting out of his breaks well because he was very fluent in his movements. So that was huge for me to see. Yeah, he, he excels uh, in your face and also off the ball. And, and that's what you got to be able to do. You want to be a complete corner. But yeah, J. Cole, um, you know, he looks the part and he is the part, man. He, he a big, that's a big corner. Yeah. Coach, was gonna, we're going to go to your linebacker. You got a class of 2022 kid. You're going to have to help me pronounce his last name. I think it's Chris Skilgen. Yeah, uh, Skilgen. 6'1", 220. Speak a little bit about him. And uh, he has a high GPA as well, too. Yeah, I mean, Chris was um, – was invaluable to our defense. Um, last year, we had a lot of injuries. Um, we lost a lot of guys towards that back half, and Chris started at, at probably three different positions on our defense. Um, uh, he started at all the backer spots, even had to go play some defensive line for us as well, uh, and he excelled. I think the best word to describe Chris is relentless. Uh, he's, he's strong as heck. He has a nonstop motor, uh, and he's going to get after you all game. Um, I mean, when he meets you at the point of attack, he wants to punish you. And uh, he plays the game the way it should be played. Um, and, you know, he was he was a cog for our defense as far as just, um, you know, not being a good option to run at. Uh, but also he's very athletic. Um, you know, he has a background as a running back. And so uh, his ability to drop in space uh, and be able to, you know, whether it's defending the zone or running with the receiver or back out the backfield, um, you know, we like our chances with that. And so that versatility as a backer, of that stature. He'll tell you he is probably 225, not 220. So I gotta update that. But uh skills, he, he's uh you know he's cut from the same mode as Carter Edwards. And I'm glad they got to spend those couple of seasons together. And coach, what level do you think he's uh he's really at and, and um where, where do you think um uh is the best fit for him? Uh he's getting you know for me I always tell my guys love those that love you. Um you know the schools that show the most interest I keep a chart of interest for those guys so they can reference it. And, um, you know, for him, he's getting a lot of attention, um, you know, from Mac schools. Um, obviously, he's picked up a few offers already. Um, I can see that continue to grow as they get to see his continued athleticism. But um, one thing about all three prospects, prospects you mentioned and, and probably all the prospects on this sheet uh, is the level of gratitude that they approach each offer with. Um, Chris is, is, is grateful and static for every offer he gets. He knows it's a blessing, but he's earned it. He knows what goes into it. And, um, I think, you know, like I say, Mac, Big Ten, attention, stuff like that. That's what he's getting. Um, and I know he's going to do his uh, his due diligence and I'll be a resource for him. But um, we'll see what his best fit is. But I think he's getting acknowledgement at the level that, that he deserves. And so, uh, you know, he's grateful for it. And I'm proud to watch it play out. For sure. Um, a young man, we're going to switch over to a guy that I've seen you play a little bit of everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, TJ Woodley, D-line linebacker. Uh, he's a guy that I think is one of the most, uh, he looks like one of the most physically gifted guys on your entire roster. Uh, and he's a bulldog. Speak a little bit about Mr. Woodley. And he's another guy with a 4.0 GPA. Yeah. Uh, TJ, you know, he's getting attention from the Ivy league schools, Patriot league, uh, some FCS attention, um, and even D2 attention. So TJ, uh, actually, uh, contributed for us as a freshman, um, ended up getting hurt, like on his first game of the year. Uh, and so he had to kind of rehab himself. But uh, we just want to get TJ on the field. Uh, he can play linebacker. Uh, he can play on the line. You can move him inside or outside. Um, like you said, he's an elite athlete. So, you know, amongst the group of bigs that he goes against, his athleticism is elite. Uh, obviously, he's got a background. Um, you know, Tyron Woodley, MMA champ, that's his father. And so one thing is that wrestling background, the MMA background, really shows with his hand fighting um, and his ability to get rid of people. But I think the best thing that he carries over from his father is that um, he, he has he wants to run through your face. He wants to punish you just like Pops. But at the same time, mentioning Pops, TJ's his own man, too. And so uh, he's could become quite a leader for us. Um, 
he's a guy that makes people around him better. He can get people lined up. But yeah, when you can have a brain to play backer and athleticism to play backer, but then you can go line up, you know, in those trenches and, and do work, you're going to be invaluable. And I think for him, uh, he's a guy that's considered a tweener at the next level. Um, but at the end of the day, college coaches, they all got egos and they all got creativity. So as long as you show you're a football player, they'll find a spot for you. But, yeah, with that GPA and that physicality and that athleticism, it's, it's hard to not find a way to get him on the field. So he's been huge for us. He, he's another guy I've seen before he got to high school playing on um, – I forgot the name of the team, but it was a U-City team with Kevin and – Yeah, yeah. Another great athletes. Um, and the thing that stuck out to me was his maturity. Yes. A leader, doesn't say too much, but he's always there, always making plays. And he's definitely a good a good prospect for any college coach to have on the team. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, he's um he's a complete prospect. Um, yeah. you know, not the largest kid in stature, but I mean, not in the cliche man. That man makes up for it with heart. I mean, he's about tough as they come. He's a dog. I love I love TJ and guys feed off of it. So that's that's what I love about him. All right, coach, we're gonna switch to another prospect, Seth Marcioni, six two. He's the definition of an athlete, I think, all the way to the T when we speak of him. Just because I, I seen the way you guys you showcased him at uh quarterback, he did a good job. He's physical as, as a mug. Mm -hmm. That was the thing that was the thing that jumped off. He has a great body as well, too. And another high GPA, 3.95. Speak a little bit about Mr. Marcioni. Yeah, Seth is uh he's a young, he's a young bull. Um, he's a football player, you know, kind of since like I described TJ. Uh, Seth comes from a military family, very disciplined approach, which which really flows well in what we do here at the SMET. But also outside of the, the discipline approach, we like to have fun with it. And Seth's a little bit of both. You know, like he, he knows how to be coachable. He knows how to, you know, get guys in line. But at the same time, he has fun with the game. I mean, he craves contact. Uh, I think the more he gets, the more he thrives off it. I think he can contrib contribute at multiple positions on our team. Um, I think at the collegiate level, with Seth's size, you know, he's, he's standing 6'2", probably about 215, uh, pushing 220. Uh, one of the strongest kids pound for pound on the team. Um, you know, he'll probably be in competition with Skildren for that uh, for that accolade. But at the same time, I think he can play anywhere. He can run. Uh, obviously, he was uh, all-conference as an athlete, uh, you know, with, you know, almost 700 yards passing, almost 400 running, and just uh, five starts. Uh, he didn't start the whole season. But uh, – I think he's a guy you just got to get the ball in his hands. And with his mindset as a quarterback, um, I mean, he can make some great throws. And I think this year he'll develop some chemistry, uh, you know, with the athletes around the team. And, uh, you know, we're going to plug him in all over the place. But uh, I, I love what Seth brings to the table. And uh, this year we're just really challenging him to lead. But colleges have started to take notice. The ones that have come through, uh, they love a project. I won't say he's a project. Uh, as far as football experience, but the the uh, excitement of endless possibilities of where he could play on the field at the next level, and Seth's aware of that. So. Sure, um, Coach. We're gonna keep on the 2022s, but we're gonna go to Gavin uh, Bombstad. Uh, Bombstad. Five eleven one seven. Bombstad. Sorry. Yep. Five eleven one seventy five receiver. Give us a little insight on him. Yeah, Gavin's uh, an elite athlete. Uh, actually comes from a, a tough, hard-nosed football family. His older brother played college ball as well. Um, you know, he splits his time between lacrosse and football. And, you know, it's pretty awesome because we encourage our guys to do, play multiple sports. But at the same time, you know, with an increased uh, responsibility uh, with playing multiple sports also comes an increased responsibility to get your work done. And, and he does a heck of a job. He's living in the weight room and the times he's supposed to be in the weight room. He's in his playbook when we need him there. But he's extremely reliable. Runs really sharp routes, has great hands, has really good speed, one of the fastest kids on the team. And, um, you know, it really helps our quarterbacks knowing that Gavin's going to be exactly where we need him to be in the amount of time that he needs to get there. And so um, he's he's really savvy as a route runner. And uh, I see him getting a lot of attention. He's getting some uh, FCS and Division II attention. Um, and I think it will continue to grow. This will be one of his first years really focusing in on football too. So uh, we kind of been on the back burner, which was a, no fault of his. You know, I want them to play with their hard lives, but he still got on the field even with splitting time. But uh, this year, he, he's really locking in on football. He'll continue to play lacrosse, but when he gets out there, uh, he had a heck of a year. 
in the in the short sample size we had, you know, almost getting two hundred plus yards receiving. For sure, that's a, that's a, a young man. That I, I'm just gonna say, especially with all the talent you have, getting mm -hmm. receiving isn't easy. Yeah, yeah. No, he earned his way on the field, uh, but he went about it the right way, man. I tell you, that's Golden Richards right there. He got the Ric Flair hair. That's my <laughs> dog right there. Gary, he gets it done, man. <laughs> sure. Hey, Coach, a prospect that I'm intrigued about, and and, and I want to know your – I haven't seen much of him, but I'm, I'm very intrigued about from the little clips I've seen. It's Khalil – I mean, Khalid Stewart, I believe, is the way you pronounce his name. 5'11", 180, uh, cornerback. Safety. I see he plays a little bit of everything in the in the back end. Speak a little bit about him. Yeah, Khalid was a young man that actually, uh, you know, what he made his come up on the seven on seven circuit. Uh, I believe Khalid didn't really play contact football till high school, uh, but that didn't yeah. impact his aggression on the field. Uh, you know, working with Coach Wayne and flight and stuff like that, he was very well developed when he got here. And um, Khalid was another young man. You could tell he took to the game very well. He processed stuff very fast. Um, and we were just like, we got to get Khalid on the field. So uh, his sophomore year, uh, he started a few games off for us at safety and went back and forth between safety and corner. Uh, uh, this year, he was spending a little more time at corner and nickel, um, which kind of expanded his role. And uh, he, the ball just seems to find him. I mean, you'll see on his highlight clips, uh, you know, he's got a couple interceptions. He just has really soft hands. You can see it when he's lined up at receiver. Uh, but at corner, he's a strong built kid. He's sharp. Uh, he comes from a great family. His brother Ray was uh, one of the men of the year here at DeSmet. So, uh, you know, he's definitely lived up to the family name and, and really kind of taken it to his own. Um, but I, I definitely see Khalid playing at the next level. Um, and uh, I know some coaches were here. They saw his film and, and he's getting that same level of FCS and D2 attention. And uh, I only see it continue to grow because I don't think there's anybody hungrier than Khalid. Um, um, he won't let you forget about him. Uh, with his play. You see, like, man, that ball keeps finding that kid. And so he's a takeaway machine. For sure. We got uh, – now, this is a young man I'm not very familiar with, and I'm going to throw you two guys. Uh, Curtis Mays, uh, six foot 180, and then we got Jermaine Jackson, running back and wide receiver. Speak a little bit about those two, if you won't mind. Yeah, for sure. So Curtis really flashed big for us this year. Um, this year he made a name for himself on, on the scout team as a sophomore. Uh, this year – I mean, his athleticism just took off, but Curtis has been working his butt off. You know, I, I meet with each player after the season. I lay, lay out exactly what the team needs for you. I, we get on the same page with our aspirations and what he wants out the season. I laid that out for Curtis, and he went and did all that and more. Uh, Curtis probably one of the fastest kids on the team. He clocked in at a 4-4 uh, at the showcase, um, uh, I guess, a few months ago. Um, and uh, I mean, he's a deep threat, but he also can run really sharp routes. Um, Strong built kid. Jermaine, he was a young man that just had to battle back from injury. He flashed really well as a freshman. Uh, he was tough as heck. They had him at running back. Um, and I mean, he was actually for his size, you know, he's slight. He was running. Um, we really like what we saw from him in the offseason. And then unfortunately, he tore his ACL his sophomore year. And so um, yeah. that injury, you know, that was a tough injury to battle back from. But um, really started getting back to being himself this year. Took one to the house for about a 60-yard touchdown run. Uh, the guys love Jermaine. I expect him to be a key contributor uh, for us uh, on the field. Um, I mean, he's got the tools. He's got the hunger. And, and the best part is the opportunities there. So I look forward to finding ways to get Jermaine the ball. And I think he can help us at, uh, you know, a receiver, a running back, and uh, also in that secondary. Cool. Coach, I want to skip down to the kicker because the kicker mm -hmm. never get the love. Yeah. Your kicker has a very strong leg. Yeah. Is he getting attention uh, from from the uh, colleges? And and talk a little bit about him and his progression. Special teams matter, man. We got to show our guys on the special team. <laughs> hey, you talk. Hey, I made a living doing it. Shit, I know what it means. I yeah. think uh, my dog Luke Rothermick, He um he started. This is uh like his first year kicking for us. Um, we call him Martin Grammatica. He's slight in frame, but man, he he showed up uh, actually before the pandemic hit. It was like I want to kick, you know. And we was like, all right, go get some work. You know, this is what you work on. And when he showed up uh, at the beginning of the season, we were like, yeah, this is our kicker. Uh, he has a long of forty three. He's extremely accurate. Uh, one thing that's awesome with the kickers that are smaller in stature is that their 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 leg motion on the kick is a short 
it's a short slice, right? It's not a big wind up. So it really helps with the timing and mechanics of getting the kickoff on time. But also sometimes what you may lose to those shorter guys is leg strength. And but that's not the case with him. He doesn't have a big swing, but he still got strong contact, he's very accurate with where he strikes the ball. And uh, that's why he's been so reliable for us. I think he only missed one kick on the year. Um, and so he's been uh, he's been pretty reliable. Um, and I think actually coupled with that GPA, too. Right. I think like a four three or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, he's going to have an opportunity. And, you know, he talked to me this offseason and said, Coach, he sounds real serious about kicking at the next level. And Luke, the growth he had from not having kick to kick and now he wants it. Uh, I'm happy knowing that we got a very reliable kick. Does he have a does he have a soccer background? Yes, he does. He has a soccer background, so he's actually pretty athletic too. Um, yeah, but you probably that's probably not the person you want making tackles. But I think <laughs> I'll I'll go. He did the tackling drills. He's getting there, but uh, he stick his nose in there. But I don't, I don't want him to have to. Yeah, he did a little time. Yeah. Hey, coach, and then before we forget, before we wrap up the class of twenty twenty two for you guys. We got Lewis Worthy, DN, tight end, O line, 6'2, 220. And then finally, we got Caleb Key at wide receiver, DN, at 6'3, 185. Speak about those two guys to wrap up your yes. class of 2022. Yeah. Uh, so, Lewis, if you didn't know, you think he was my son. He got dreadlocks. So, every now and then, we dress as each other on Halloween. So, Lewis is, is significantly taller than me, though. Lewis is about 6'3. He's a great athlete. Actually, came in as a heck of a baseball player. And uh, weirdly enough, we've had a lot of success with baseball players becoming a uh, good lineman for us. And so Lewis is a guy that uh, probably projects at the next level as a, as a DN. He's a very sharp young man, is involved in a lot of uh, off-campus programs and things of that nature, leadership roles, Black Student Union. He does a lot at the school. But um, I think with his athleticism, I mean, he's as quick as any linebacker that we need him to go block. Uh, he could probably even project at tight end as well at the next level, but um, seeing him uh, this, uh, actually just uh, signing day, a few days ago, he didn't shot up in height. So he has a chance to be a contributor. Uh, uh, Caleb Key, extremely fast and tall. Uh, he, has a, he has the build of a big X receiver. Um, when we were working out in front of colleges uh, during the off season, uh, a lot of them took notice to him as far as his frame, you know, um, you know, he, one of the best things we get asked at the cement, and this is kudos to class of 21, 2021 through 2017, all the classes that were here under, uh, our staff is colleges, uh, call now. And, and instead of saying who you got, they say who's next. And I think when they see, uh, and I think that's a testament to the young <laughs> men we produced and, 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 and the faith that they have in what we can develop. And that's the question they asked when they saw, uh, key, they said, who's next? Cause it's six, three kid look like it. And so, um, you know, he's battled through some challenging things, but I mean, he can get open and we just need him to hang on to it because he, he's got all the makings. He's fast as heck, tall, not afraid. He plays defense for us too. So, um, I think if there's somebody that could come out of nowhere, cause a lot of those guys are established that you mentioned, um, you know, him, Curtis and Jermaine have a chance to just kind of blow up. Uh, in that senior year. And we've always had two or three of those seniors going to the next level that uh, might have bloomed a little late. And I think those three have to make it. Finally, it's time to jump into that class of 2023. Yeah. And to start that off, we got to talk about a guy who I feel like every couple of years, we're always talking about a family member that he has in St. Louis going on to be the next thing at the college level. That is Mr. Mac Markway, 6'4", 245, one of the best bodies, uh, tight end, DN, has almost every offer in the country, basically, right now. Yeah. Um, like I spoke on a little bit about the lineage of his family. Speak a little bit about how he comes in, works hard, even though he has everything right now. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, the one thing that you worry about as a coach is anytime a young man comes from a, a, a family that is known for football, you always have to see is this young man playing football because that's just the path that was laid in front of him or is he playing it because he loves the game mac loves football i think if none of his family members play football he'd still be playing and working hard as he does probably wouldn't be as big but he'd be playing <laughs> and working as hard and so mac is an easy kid to root for man he came in humble as ever um you know i know he came in highly recommended uh, i knew his family his father his mother he comes from a great family but He's just an extension. I think the best thing he took from all those waves of great athletes 
is that to be successful, you have to stay humble and hungry. And I think he's the epitome of that. Um, he has earned everything he's gotten, and that's the expectation with him. He hasn't asked me for one handout. But I think uh, he's a guy that is going to be a focal point uh, on both sides of the ball. He tore it up on defense, um, and he's an absolute problem on offense. But, I mean, he's a big athlete. Like, when you think athlete, you think 4'3", 340. No, he's a kid that's 250 and probably as fast as you can get at that size. He's a kid that's been dunking since seventh, eighth grade. But he's bought into the work ethic. I think his biggest talent is not his size or his speed or his strength. It's his work ethic. And I think that's why, um, you know, the sky's the limit for him. And his growth was exponential between his freshman year and his sophomore year. And so this junior year is going to be uh, one for the ages, I think, for him. You know, the, in high school, it's always difficult to implement a tight end in the, in the offense. So I'm curious to see how, how you implement that, that tight end position in the offense, especially when you have two guys who you like at that position. Yeah, and, yeah, know, for sure. Yeah, and on defense, he's a monster playing DN, big mm -hmm. body, long arms, and uh, I'm I'm just can't wait to see him attack the quarterback that uh, this this coming year. Yeah, he's definitely as advertised. And for me, Mark Way is crazy because I actually love him the best on defense. I mean, oh my gosh, like I seen him when you put him out there, and it, it just seemed effortless. Like it yeah. wasn't. Any type of like it was like he played that all all his life or something, you know. So to see him uh, come out there and be an athlete and and, and be a guy that's a dog, because like you said, one thing I don't see from a guy that has every offer in the country. And every time I've talked to him, he's always been humble. So yeah. that that that's that's the biggest thing for me. I now, would say this for him, real. I would say that seamless transition. Coach Dilworth, our D line coach, does a really good job of developing. Our D lineman. Now, I think I take most pride in that from a football perspective is our style's ability to develop. Um, I think a lot of these young men could be good or successful wherever they go, but it's on us to squeeze every ounce of ability out of them. And, and Dill has done a great job of, of making sure Mac's prepared, and Mac has been extremely coachable. And I'll tell you right now, Mac just want to play. He loved playing tight end. He loved playing football. So when he's that selfless, um, it becomes infectious with his teammates. For sure. And also, uh, you just mentioned him, so shout out to Coach Dale. Bridge was good, baby. Good deal, real deal. Real <laughs> deal, holy deal. Hey, let's get into a kid. Alan Mitchell, you had him at running back his freshman year, slid him over to wide receiver his sophomore year. I think he's a guy that just needs the ball in space. Mm -hmm. He'll make a play. Yeah. Uh, speak a little bit about Alan Mitchell. We got him at We'll say 5'11", 175. I don't know how fast the 40 is, but he can move. Yeah. Speak a little bit about Mitchell. Yeah, it's Alan Mitchell. You can call him Alvin Mitchell because he's like Alvin Kamara. I think, um, you know, we can put him anywhere. I think he's the focal point for our offense. Um, you know, uh, you know, he had to split a lot of touches the past couple years, mm -hmm. um, and, and he's handled that well. And, uh, you know, this year is his year to shine. I think uh, he's definitely a guy that's a, a focal point for our offense. He can get the ball anywhere. Um, it's just, he's a playmaker. So he's a great route runner. He's a yak guy. He's also tough. He can get the hard physical yards. Uh, his work ethic is unrivaled. And so, um, you know, he's really started to mature. Uh, me and Alan have developed a really good relationship where we can be very straightforward and transparent with each other. And I think that's provided a lot of clarity for his path. Um, colleges see his film. I think he's, he's very intriguing to a lot of them. I think this is a, a big year for him. Um, just that junior year is always a big year for prospects, uh, anything you do as a freshman, a sophomore is potential, right? Like, unless you're a physical specimen, a lot of freshmen and sophomores don't catch people's eyes right off the rip. Um, but he's a guy, his, his elite traits come with his speed and athleticism. So, um, yeah, I, I think he's going to be a monster. I think he's going to be one of the top players in the area. Um, and, and he's approaching it the right way. So um, I, I, I'm very optimistic about it. I love I love the nickname. Alvin, <laughs> yeah, it's very yeah. accurate. <laughs> yes, yes, you no, can move him anywhere. Yeah, Mitchell. I think, um, like you said, he was a guy at running back. I remember you putting him in as a freshman, and he was still making plays even though he had three D one running backs in front of him. Mm -hmm. So one thing that's been huge for me is I like to see how guys are able to men mentally withstand having other guys in front of them, and how are you going to continue to work 
to you know show that you belong and i think yes. he's done a great job of that yes yes he definitely has i mean it's not easy because uh, Alan's a competitor, man. Yes, he is. Um, and so I always challenge him to be mature competitor, which means uh, compete but do it with the team. The team in mind is the best interest. And at the end of the day, uh, if, if you keep that team first, everything else will fall in the line. And this is is Alan's time to shine. Uh, you know, at times underutilized, uh, in my opinion. But I knew this day was coming to where he was going to be out there, and you know, it was going to be a shot to get going. And I think he realizes now that that moment's here. Is his teammates that he needs the most, and yep. so um, you know he's out there motivating guys and pushing them, and and so just like Mac, him taking that humble approach is is you know why why the Smed is where is that? It's because it was a bunch of guys that realized everything they wanted was found in the team, and that's not a huge selling point these days. Uh, we try to play as many kids as possible um, uh, because I feel like you do things the right way, you deserve to play, but. Uh, we compete at practice, and that's where you earn your spots and your reps and your touches, and he's earned those, and, and that's why he's put himself in great position to lead this team on the offense side of the ball. For sure. Yes, sir. A guy that you talk about intriguing QBs, we speak about length. We speak about guys with tons of upside. I don't think anybody fits the mold better than Mr. Christian Gray, cornerback, 6'1", 175, who honestly, he hasn't gotten a ton of reps yet. But the reps that I've seen him have all been quality. I've had a chance to see him in seven on seven. I've also had a chance to see him in one on ones, you know, just with young men working out. And that young man competes at a high level. Speak about yeah. Mr. Gray and what, what are the expectations for him? Obviously, you know, I love my DBs. Um, and so, I, you know, I've been blessed with an awesome group. And, and they've really bought into the development we've thrown at them. Christian has all the makings to be on the same trajectory as you know, guys. Um, I think he'll be one of the top corners in the country. Um, and you know what? He's starting to believe that as much as I did the moment I saw him. You know, uh, uh, I think Christian has great length. Uh, he takes a very cerebral approach to the game. He's a student of the game. Um, and now physically, he's getting stronger to where he can even bang with you on the island. Mm -hmm. And so I think he got that from JK and Jordan Coleman, you know, and Khalid and seeing those guys be aggressive. And, he knows there's only one way to play this game, whether you're on the island or you're in the trenches. And so uh, he's a superb athlete, works his butt off. He can fly. You know, he's one of the faster kids on the team. He probably has some of the best technique, press our off man. Um, and that was even as a sophomore. Um, obviously, the pandemic impacted a lot of people. Um, as far as, I mean, our season, we had seven weeks in a row uh, where we had one practice a week. Um we didn't even get but six practices in before our season opener, uh, three one week and three the next. And those things impact young guys. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're not naive to the point. This pandemic impacted everybody. And so uh, Christian took a lot on himself to just like let me get working. He would call me. I would send him drills to do. I would critique his drills. He would record them and shoot them to me. And I just knew he was hungry. Uh, towards the back end of the season, we played three teams that ran the ball, you know, 70 percent of the time. So. Uh, you know, usually it was him holding the edge, but um, and one on ones, and, and you know, the guys that we got at receiver, you can send those clips out to colleges too, and, and they're able to see like he's going against legit competition, he's doing that to you know, Ja'Kalen Johnson, a great receiver like Rashad Smith Harvey, you know, Gavin. You're able to respect that, uh, because you know the quality guys he's going against, and so Christian is taking every opportunity, like you said, to present a quality rep. And that's why, you know, he has the Kansas State offers, you know. Um, and so he's one of, a, you know, our three sophomores that already have early Division One offers. But he's taking advantage of every opportunity, and he's never uh, questioned the process. And, and the process will reward him uh, this year and, and the years to come. Coach, I don't know how you do it with all those guys playing DB and all of them deserve time on the field. Like, it's a, that was a loaded back, <laughs> defensive backfield. I don't know how you did it, but kudos to you. Appreciate that. I think they, um, you know, the, the goal for a lot of these young men, and it's not the number one goal of coaching, but for a lot of our young men, they want to play college ball. This is what it's going to look like. So why wait? Why yeah. wait to compete every day at practice? You know, why wait to go against good competition? Why wait to test your resilience? I don't make it hard on him. You're good enough to play. You play. That's why Christian gets on the field early. That's why Mac and Allen started sophomore. I mean, freshman, you know, you can play, you can play. Um, but at the same time, why wait to compete at a high level? And, and that's what we've tried to create with our program. 
Uh, obviously, we're, we're young, but these young guys, they're going to get to compete this year, you know. And so I think Christian, uh, he's really been a sponge to those around him. And uh, the D-backs know we're going to get you guys all on the field. It's a long season. You guys are all going to play. And we stay engaged. We mix and match what we put out there. And um, they've handled it well to where you can have four Division One cornerbacks and all four of them are getting Division One attention. Um, but I think that's kudos to the – foundation laid by the players before them and, and respect to these guys that understand this process works. You know, you don't have to wait till your senior year, but we're going to get you out there and get you seen. Just give me something to sell. I sell it. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they've they done a hell of a job. Hey, one thing I'm going to tell you real quick before we, we switch over, because I want you to um, kind of get the last four, the 2023 guys in your mind that you want to speak about. Mm -hmm. One thing that we got to give you credit for is, is that these kids are picking off offers at a rapid rate. You talk about selling. I don't know what you're saying, but whatever you're selling, people are buying quickly. Yeah, I would say um, you can't promote anything that you're not going to deliver on on a high level. And so um, obviously it is a blessing that I myself been blessed enough to play at a high level. So you've seen it. You, you know what it looks like. Uh, but also I got some pretty awesome coaches here, too, who have also done the same. And so those guys not only can vouch for these kids, but they develop them. And so. Some of the best questions that I get asked in a, in a scout or recruiting session is, man, who's your receivers coach? Who's your who's your old line coach? Who's your linebackers coach? Because they can see the technique. They can see the fundamental approach. And that gives them confidence in the program to know that this young man academically is going to be developed. He's going to be challenged at a very mature level, um, but he's going to be extremely competitive. And that, and that's college football in the football aspect is ABCs. Always be competing. As they always say, it's ABCs. Always be competing. And that's what we do. And so um, I can't sit here and take all the credit for that. I got awesome young men. They bought in to what we're trying to do. Um, at the end of the day, they might get everything they want. They may not get everything they want uh, from colleges, but we respect the fact that that's the college decision to choose who they offer. But I'm going to promote you, develop you, and give you the best chance to get seen. And that process has played out very well for our young men. Um, and I know they're working from a good place, and, and, and the same goes with me. So. Uh, but it takes a village. And so it's not just me. Uh, it's my coaches, the kids, their parents done a great job keeping me in the loop. You know, we got 12 kids that will sign the college programs this year alone. Twelve seniors, nine of them will be Division One. Um, and it's the whole community, it's the teachers, it's, it's you guys, you know, giving them their acknowledgement, giving them their, their 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 roses, you know, while they're here, you know. And so um, it's all of us, bro. Like it ain't just Coach Steeples. It's elite getting them seen. You know, it's, it's my coaches, it's their parents. So I can't take it all, but I'm proud of, of where we're headed and excited to see what it produces. Coach, let's get into these last four 2023 guys, and I'm gonna let you blindly pick. So I'm putting you on the spot. We're gonna oh, let you, you pick who you want to who you want to dive into next. Well, obviously Elijah Thomas. Um, I think very highly of Elijah Thomas. I think he's due for a high breakout season. He did some great things. Um. Uh, as a freshman and in this year as a sophomore, as a returner, uh, really flashed as a DB. But I think on offense, um, he's a guy you can build around. He reminds me of um, old guy from my from my old school, Memphis. Who's the guy? Who's the backup running back for the Dallas Cowboys? Uh, I'm on my fantasy team. He's cold. Uh, shoot. Oh, Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard. Yes, you are. So Elijah, I see in the same mode as Tony Pollard. Uh, Tony was a, a guy that could play receiver and running back. And um, Elijah's that he's a strong runner. He's fast. He's aggressive. Um, every play he touches the ball is a big play. Um, and so we really just challenged Elijah to mature. But I've been talking to him uh, over the past few months, and you can just see it in his eyes. He's ready. Um, I believe in him. His teammates are excited for him. And so I think uh, he's going to have a huge role for us this year on both sides of the ball. Um, collegially, he uh, probably projects as a DB in some capacity, but I think once they see him with the ball in his hands, he's going to tear some cats up. So really high on Elijah. Um, Tom, I think he's going to have a breakout year. Uh, next guy I would talk about is um, uh, Bryson Rowe, started for us at center. Uh, Bryson is an extremely resilient kid. He, um, you know, God bless him. Uh, you know, he dealt with some changes in family dynamics. His mother's an angel that's watching over us. And, and Bryson's making his mother proud. And he's serving his teammates like no other man. He started for us at center. Um, and he made second team all conference doing that. He's a big kid, six one, about 260. And 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 Roley gets it out the mud, man. Wherever 
wherever there's work to be had, he's going to get it in. I ain't no weight room. He's going to find a way. So he always shows up better than he was when he left. So I think he's going to have a huge role for us. Um, another lineman, Xavier McClendon. X a big kid, about 6'3", about 280. Um, X uh, actually uh, comes from both of these young men. Fathers play football at a high level, uh, at the collegiate level, and they're cut from the same mold. Uh, X is versatile. He can play guard or tackle. Um, but with that height, he keeps growing. Um, I think he's going to be a guy that's tough. Also, these guys held their own against the guy in Dakota uh, and our mind every day at practice, you know, in the trenches. And so I think they're better men because of it. And that's what our program should do is should just get better at game day. Every practice should be able to grow and X is taking advantage of that. Um, Cam Wright, uh, we call him Pigeon Toe. Uh, he actually contributed for us at a high level. Make sure you check his highlight tape out. Uh, he's got a build of a safety uh, slash outside backer. Uh, had a few sacks for us on the season. Um, very athletic, very aggressive um, player. He's a downhill guy, but uh, also is a, is a pretty solid receiver, too, So uh, and can run that ball. So I like him. And then Cadillac. Cadillac. Um, ooh, ooh, hey, Coach. This one yeah. of my favorite because he, he he played with the Dirty Birds for us for a second. Yeah. But he also is a kid that's battling, you know, fighting back. I'm yeah. happy to hear about him. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, so, so Lack. Well, right now I'm calling him Allen because he cut the dreads off. So his name is Allen right now. But on the football field, he's still smooth as Cadillac, man. He um is a guy. He's a big X receiver. Uh, he can also play in the slot. I kind of see him in the mode of a Cooper Cup or something like that. Um, a big guy that can also get grimy and hold it down. Uh, he has some of the best hands on the team. Uh, he don't drop nothing. And I mean, he's a 4.0 student, one of the smartest kids in the school. And so, um, you know, James and his family and, and have done a great job with Cadillac. And I think uh, he got thrown in the fire this year and he handled it well. Um, he got he took his lumps and his bruises, but I can tell how he's working this offseason. Uh, he's encouraged and, and he knows he's got us. He's, he's such an easy kid, to root for. you know, having sustained a knee injury before he even got to high school and having to miss his freshman year to see that knee brace come off and see him fly around. Uh, I think he's going to tear it up this year. Um, you also got um, Trayvon Piggy Blake. Trey Piggy Blake, he's a running back, but he can play D-line and running back. Uh, Trey, he comes from a wrestling background, too. He was our freshman running back. Trey's about 6'1", about 6 feet, about, I would say 6'1", about 250. But he can run the ball, too. But he um, he actually got thrown in the fire. He didn't play D-line. COVID really impacted his, his ability uh, his availability in the off season when we didn't have much going, but he started the last three, uh, what two games of the season and tore it up like split double teams doing all that. And so, uh, he, he just really transitioned. I see he really grew up last year, so I think he'll do well. Um, you know, you got uh, the bias, the bias boys, Eric's one of the oldest ones, EJ. I think he can do some good stuff for us, and then we got a uh, a few transfer students that I'm pretty excited about to see what they can do when the summer comes. and and, 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 you know, once we get out there in June, we can see them fly around and see them with the pass. But, you know, you know, Colt's very promising. Uh, BJ, our quarterback, who started a few games for us. Um, BJ, the sniper, he's uh, he's sharp um, and he's growing still. I like BJ's approach, but uh, Colt's going to be able to do some for us, too. And um, Alan, uh, Alan Middleton. I'm, I'm curious to see what he can do as well. He comes Mascuda highly. Mascuda wide receiver, right? Former Mascuda. Uh, yes, yes, Mascuda, yep. So he uh, he showed up first week of school with a firm handshake. I said I should, probably should have been a fist pound with COVID, but I was like, <laughs> <laughs> got to sit down and meet with him and, and just, you know, our, our young men, they, they are aware what, what works in our program and, and – and what the program brings. And so to attract such quality young men like those is great, but I love the guys we get to develop too. Um, and so I'm pretty excited to see uh, what they do. Even the uh, little cake of Sanborn, I think he can do some good stuff for us in the slot. And uh, we got a uh, Dayon Gaston. I love Dayon. He's in the weight room right now as we speak. So um, it's a lot of kids out there. It's a lot of weapons. And I'll tell you right now, I'm excited because I know we can get all of them out there on the field too. And so um, it is good, like I say, to have opportunities, but to be able to deliver. Them. And so these guys are going to compete. But they're going to compete together. We're young, but there's an excitement that comes with that because the growth is at even a higher rate. At some point when you're a mature team, uh, you can grow, but you're really trying to sustain and invest. This group, it's like, hey, 
what they may show up as week one and what you may get going into the playoffs uh, could be two completely different products, especially the way our coaches coach. So I I'm pretty excited for them. Hey, Coach, I want to to really dive into your program really quick. And I got a question. What is everybody talk about this mad man? What is mad man, man? Can we get a can we get a little bit of understanding? Uh, yes. Mad man. Yeah. So my after my first season, you know, we were sitting there thinking, you know, I, I was like, what qualities? Because the Smash mantra is men for and with others, right? And so everybody comes here with their son, or, or you know, uh, their son saying, "All right, how do you develop my son from a boy to a man?" And so I said, "What what qualities do I want in our young men and our players?" And so, uh, Mad Men stands for mindset, accountability, action, and discipline. And so I felt that if you're mentally tough, all right, you're accountable means you're bought into the standard with everything. Uh, if you're about action, that's a huge one these days. So that doesn't mean you talk about it or you tweet about it, but your actions might match your aspirations. You know what I'm saying? Like if you want to go play college at HBCU, well then you better have a high, you better have a 3.5, 3.0 HBCU, you know what I'm saying, uh, GPA. All right, if not, your aspirations and actions ain't matching up and we got to fix that. And then last thing is discipline. And that's just how we approach things. And so a man isn't an adult. And an adult is nothing more than a person that's ready to lead. Like this could say mad woman, this could say mad man. An adult is a person that's ready to lead, whether it's a leader of their house, their team, or themselves at minimum. And so if you're mentally tough, you're accountable, you're about action and you're disciplined, then you're ready to lead. And so a lot of teams uh, that I've been a part of and, and no fault of their own, but we come up with cute slogans every year. And it's not like you master it. Like if our mantra the year we won state, let's say it was uh, was all in. Right. Um, just because we won doesn't mean we master being all in. The goal is to be more of it each year. And so for us, we said, well, we're going to be more mad men each year. We're going to be more mentally tough, more accountable, more action, more discipline. And, and that's what it became for us. And it wasn't initially the catchiest phrase, but nor is Alabama's uniforms. Right. But those uniforms, they people want that ugly little number on the side of that crimson helmet because Alabama put something into it. And now with the guys we're producing, they put something on it that it means something. And so for me, this applies not just on the field, but in life. My job is to take that framework, provide clarity with it, lay it out as clear as possible and, and push those guys within those. That's how we earn our jersey numbers. That's how we earn our helmet stickers, all that. Are you being more madman each day? And, um, you know, I wouldn't be much of a man or much of a coach if I just used these kids up for football. And so I think madman is something that sets them up for success at this level and then also for success um in life thereafter and so um yeah we had to go get a trademark um a couple big couple big 10 universities uh i went into their room and it was uh they had it on their wall in like their recruiting room or something uh, i got a picture of it but fortunately uh yeah we already had trademark rights to it but i'm like i want to keep that with these young men like they, they made it what it is and so if ever you're a madman, it is, this is where it's from. And so uh, these guys have, have put a lot of respect on it, and they've laid out a very healthy blueprint or formula for success. Um, but at the same time, as I push madman, I want them to be their own person. So um, become more of that, but do it in the way that God blessed you to do it. So um, you don't have to be a robot. This is not a, a scholarship meal or football factory. This is a place where we develop young men to be uh, productive members of society. And, and that's the whole reason I got into it, is, is to create opportunities, change lives, and make memories. And everything else is icing on the cake. And so Mad Men helps us do that. I love it. I love it. Can we talk about this, this last um, past, uh, just now signing their uh, letters of intention? Mm -hmm. Talk about this class here and how special that, that class is to the program. And what it's what it's done for the program? Yeah, I mean, champs out of them, coach. Huh? So you got back to back state championships out of that twenty twenty one. Yeah, group. yeah, we got we got there twice with the group, and you know what? That group is is one that I'm extremely proud of because what they came into is not something that you're ex that that some people are excited to come into. Um, program, I think it won three games in three years up until that point. Um, and these were young men that were competitors that wanted to create their own path um, and, and and leave a legacy, not just that's left, but that's carried. And so, you know, obviously, you know, you had Rico and Hard Rock and and, and, and 
I would say Hudson and, and Brody, those are like the the guys that people were excited about, you know, like, you know, you, you saw it in them the moment they left that eighth grade football field. You knew they were guys. And then, um, you know, with that came guys like Dakota and Derez and, and Taj and, and uh, Denver, right? You know, you had guys that that developed. Derez, I saw the first time I saw Derez, he was playing basketball. I was like, oh, Lord, what are we going to do with him? But he, he carried the ball better than he shoot it. But it was like – those guys laid a, a, a great foundation. They were selfless. It took an immense amount of sacrifice, but there was a lot of love in what we were doing. And I think, honestly, um, as a black man, sometimes I don't think we hear that enough. And uh, to do that process with love um, and, and to see kids come together of all races, it was awesome. And it's, it's been what motivated me as an adult. They've been an example of me. But to, to have them take ownership and understand that you're not a statistic. I remember I asked them when they first got here, I asked their parents what percentage of athletes make it to college on scholarships. And parents were, I had the first slide, said, how many? And they were raising their hand, 2%, 3%, 7%. And the next slide said, it doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, it's not my job to tell you what statistics are. They take care of them. My job is to identify what your aspirations are and push you to it. That's my job as a coach and push you to it within the structure of a team and of a loving family. And so that's what they bought into. They didn't because statistics, we got 20 seniors and 12 of them are going to play college ball and the other eight are extremely successful. They just didn't want to, you know, uh, and so and they're, and they're successful in their own right. But statistics create anxiety sometimes. You know, it creates that, that crab in the barrel approach is saying the more you get, it's the less for me. And those guys didn't adopt that approach. They said, we're not a statistic. You know, we're young men that are motivated, that are hungry, and we're going to lead each other there. And I'm glad they got to cross the finish line together. Um, so that's what they mean to this program is taking ownership in your own success. And, and, and the statistics are for those who want to spend time worrying about it. But that's not what our guys do. They're conquerors. I, 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 you're right, because I remember that one and nine season, and I remember how they were. It didn't really. It, it you can see they were tired of losing, but it didn't mm -hmm. make them quit. It didn't. It made them stronger. It yeah. made them more of a team. And to see them now all graduate and go and do great things at the next level, I can't wait to see them. Yeah, it's gonna be fun to watch, and and I myself had to become a better coach, and we just we went on that journey together. Nobody pointed the finger. We was like, shit, I got shit, I got to get better. Uh, y'all know what y'all got to do, and I think they they they've laid a hell of a foundation, not just for the Smet, but I think I hope St. Louis can see success in it, and know like, hey, it's a lot of y'all can make it. Don't worry about them numbers. Keep your head down, work on yours. Don't look at nobody else's plate. Believe in team, do it with love and gratitude, you'll be fine. So um, I just hope we continue to celebrate each other. Hey, Coach, I got one last question for you, but it's like a two-part question. I'm putting okay. you on the spot, man. It ain't no – I'm not letting you duck or hide from it either, all right? All right. All right let me get myself ready. All right, all right, all right. You ready? Yeah. How do the Mad Men go back and become state championships for the third time in a row? And also, how do the Mad Men – Make sure that they defend that MCC title against CBC, who you know will be hungry, who just recently had it the year before you guys, two years before you guys had the reign. Yeah, I would say on the MCC perspective, I think every team in our conference is a contender. That's kind of how the MCC is set. I think CBC always has an outstanding lineage in their own right, but I'd be crazy to tell you that Luz, Chaminade, and Biani don't have our respect. There's a lot of good teams in our MCC. Um, how do we go back? You know, I had this conversation with my players recently. What does success look like for us? And I think success for us looks like becoming more of a family each day. And I think there's three C's that we'll do every day. We're going to challenge each other. We're going to celebrate each other. Um, and, and, and we're going to connect with one another. And I think if we do that, we become more of a family. Um, I think we'll get everything we want out of it. And even if anything falls short, we'll be able to pick each other up. But I'll tell you right now, this group is hungry. It's going to be a day by day thing. We have to be adaptable because COVID is still here. You know, like it ain't going nowhere right now, unfortunately. But I think our kids know that. And it's like, hey, we got to get to work because we can sit at the end of the season and say, well, you know, COVID. No, nah, you don't get this year back. It's an NCAA. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't no extra year. So I think we get back by becoming more of a family. I think 
we work on what's in front of us um and state will take care of itself we've never we didn't get to to back to back state championship appearances by looking at state because you can lose out on that opportunity in the 13 weeks prior so um our focus right now is just to become better become more uh, of a family and 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 really just buy into the system we're putting in because we got a lot of people stepping up. Like I said, but um, this group's competitive. And so they're going to put their best foot forward. And so um, I'm not going to place any expectations on them other than what their actions show. Well, this has been the playbook, man. We appreciate you for coming on. The Smet head coach, Coach Steeples. Um, the Mad Men, mm -hmm. and we look forward to seeing you guys in the 2021 season compete for another championship. Man, appreciate y'all. It ain't a football season to y'all there, man. Play <laughs> man, man. Right on. Yeah. No, I appreciate that, Coach. And actually, I lied. I said one more question, but I got one more because I got to put you on the spot so your players can beat you up. Yeah. Which one was the better state championship team, the first one or the second one? Well, shoot, we didn't win this one, so damn it. I'm going to take 2019. Uh, in 2019, obviously we won it, but I would say this: um, I'm glad a lot of guys got the experience getting to the state championship game in 2020 because um, um, they get to learn from it. It lit a fire under them, uh, and I think every guy wanted to play in that game. And no matter you know how many guys were injured, guys got opportunities. They got thrown in the fire. They know what it feels like at the highest level, and they can go do it. Uh, but yeah, in comparison to the two, obviously, it feels a lot better winning one as a coach than as a player. So, yeah, 2019, obviously, that, that's the best one. The one as a player, we wore big jerseys and, and the pictures look ugly as hell. And we had one bar on our face mask. And my dreadlocks was young. So, uh, those days don't look as cool as what they did. So, I would go with 2019. Well, I mean, I appreciate you, Coach, for having uh, – I mean, for you joining us and you coming on and talking to us about your program. Uh, we look forward to seeing you guys, like Julian said, and um, good luck this year, all right? Yes, sir. Keep promoting St. Louis, man. We're rooting for everybody in the city. It ain't no one crown. Let's all go come out on top and change these young men's lives, man. Appreciate y'all. That's facts. We appreciate that, Coach. Yes, sir. Salute. Yep. Yeah.